Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Garb August, a trash-filled event of reading garbage for the month of August. It was created by uh, Ollie at Crim and Ollie. He assembled a deplorable list of co-hosts who've been making trash-related videos and uh, trash-related discussions all throughout the month of August, and August is almost over. I hate to admit it. Uh, it seems counterintuitive to admit it because it's 100 degrees here in Boston, blare and bright. Uh, incredibly high humidity, it, it, you go outside and you are slapped in the face immediately by summer. No holds barred summer. I, it's possible that that will change for September, but it doesn't feel like the uh, like the, the doorstep of September, which is traditionally in this part of the neck of the woods referred to as the beginning of autumn. Uh, nevertheless, Garbogs is coming to an end. Tomorrow is the final day of Garbogs. A great number of my co-hosts has been so much fun doing this event, and a number of my co-hosts have already done videos bidding fond farewell to uh, to Garbagas. Uh, I don't want to do that yet. <laughs> I, I, I make more videos every day than they do, so I can hang on until the bitter and I get one more book done, and then tomorrow I'll do I'll do a farewell myself. Uh, so the the last book that I picked, uh, there's a um, thing that I haven't been doing when I've been picking my garbage books. Uh, for Garb August, and that was straying into a genre that has a lot of garbage in it, and that is science fiction. I, I've been reading a lot of garbage in August, a lot more than I've been talking about, and a lot of it has been science fiction, but a lot of it hasn't. Uh, especially since when it comes to garbage in science fiction, two things are involved. One, a lot of what's dismissed just out of hand as complete garbage in science fiction isn't has a little bit more worth to it. I've been finding that that is true for a lot of stuff that's dismissed just in general as garbage, that you can find worth in a lot of things, maybe not in utterly in love, but uh, but with a lot of things, there'll be something to keep... There is such a thing, in other words, as good garbage. Uh, but also for the reason that uh, that is more personal, which is that garbage science fiction and I go way back. <laughs> we go way back. I have a deep sentimental connection to the kind of garbage that you can only get in science fiction. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that was on my mind when I picked what I guess will now be my final Garb August book for Garb August 2022. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that we want Garb August to come back next year. Uh, I picked a science fiction book. I bought this just recently. When did I get this? Yeah, I got this just recently. This is by uh, Brett Sterling. And it is the very first Captain Future novel. It's Danger Planet. And the muscular super hottie on the cover there is Captain Future, I believe. I assume it is. Uh, I think this is a Frazetta cover. Certainly, aspects of it look that way. I love it. I love the cover. The cover's what made me buy it. Uh, it's a little unusual because in the book, Captain Future spends his time not with uh, buxom young ladies who on garbage covers are always clasping they're always clasping the legs of the hero it's like they can't stand up <laughs> it's like they've got scurvy or something they can't stand up all the way they've, they're laying down and grasping legs that's a very unnatural thing to do even if you are paralyzed with fear that's a very strange thing to do uh i'm assuming that that is captain future he has red hair bright red hair and he's young uh and that's how he's described in this first book but in this book he mostly hangs out with robots <laughs> not with beautiful women uh specifically a, a a group of, uh, there's a human-like android, there's a giant robot, a metal robot, and there's a disembodied brain, a brain that is carried along by, in an energy cocoon, well, a human brain, but that has no body anymore, it's just, it's just existing in this containment field. Uh, the Future Men are what they are colloquially dubbed, and Captain Future and the Future Men have been the subject of, when this book opens, they are already the subject of legend. They've had a million adventures that have been recounted in a million different worlds, uh, and so when the main character, the main civilian character in this book encounters Captain, uh, Captain Future in the flesh, he's amazed to see an ordinary young guy, uh, a seemingly ordinary young guy, uh, and his weird Future Man companions. And the Future Man have, have uh, created a lot of the technology that, that interplanetary travel takes for granted in, in the world of this book. I've only read one Captain Future book. I think there were a lot of others, some others anyway. I've never read any others except this one. And I was reading along, and I was liking it. I was enjoying it. Uh, there's a, a problem in a, a far distant planet, which is one of the only places uh, in the interplanetary concilium where a particular kind of plant can grow. It needs a huge amount of sunlight, a huge amount of humidity. Uh, we're told, for instance, when did this come out? 
uh, vitrion is the name of the substance. This came out in 1945, and we're told at the beginning of this book uh, that those conditions are needed for this substance to grow, and the whole of the economic of the interplanetary economy relies on it. Uh, and there are a few places where it will grow, and we're told that one of them might be Venus, except that Venus has the it has the heat and it has the humidity, but it's it has too much water. <laughs> it's too it's too much of a water world because in 1945 it was assumed that Venus had huge boiling seas, and was not just a completely waterless place, uh, but. There is a distant planet where this stuff can grow, where it can be harvested, but there seems to be a problem with the natives, who were relatively peaceful when Captain Future last met them, <laughs> for instance, when a lot of the original settlers met them. Now they seem to be acting up, attacking colonists, attacking any kind of uh, harvesting pro pro uh, process involved here. And everyone wants to know why, including now Captain Future and the Future Men. <laughs> uh, and, they go there to figure out what the problem is in this outpost town. And they take with them a callow youth who is starstruck by Captain Future and amazed by the adventures, the stories that he's heard. Uh, uh, sort of a... Uh, sort of a city slicker. Who's not really used to the rough and tumble ways of uh, Captain Future and his future man. Who might also almost be seen as, oh, I don't know, some kind of marshals. Really experienced marshals. Interplanetary rangers, one might even say. <laughs> and there are no good civilians, some of whom have civilian power in the local shanty towns that have erupted around this alien planet. And there are restless natives who have a noble side to them, but it, they, they get very dangerous when they are exploited. Uh, and I'm, so I was reading along in Danger Planet, and I was thinking, the more I read, I was thinking, this isn't making me think of the great booktube event Garb August. The more I read, the more this is making me think of another great booktube event, June on the Range, which was created by Michael K. Vaughan to celebrate westerns. Not science fiction, <laughs> but westerns. Uh, the more I read, the more I thought, okay, well, you've got atom pistols, and you've got a giant robot, and there's mention of aliens, and then we meet the aliens. And the, but this seems like a Western. This seems like a Western story that has just changed its trappings. That's all. I was about two-thirds of the way through. This is a lightning fast read. At, at, uh, I don't know. I, I think Brett Sterling is probably a pseudonym. I have no idea. Uh, and I, I don't know any, any of the history of this author, but this is terrifically page-turning. It is classic trash. I mean, the world-building is good up to a point, but not great anything that the author needs to happen. The author waves his hand and has it happen without explaining it or extrapolating it into the world. It's got the the uh, colorized pages. It's got a Frank Frazetta cover. It's got a lot of the, uh, the hallmarks of trash. And it is. It's not good science fiction by any means. No one would call it that. Uh, but it was very page-turning, very enjoyable. But about halfway through, I was thinking, well, you know, if this were a Western, no spoilers, but if this were a Western, one of two things is going to happen. Either the most seasoned marshal, the most seasoned ranger, is going to die and pass on the mantle to this, this tenderfoot who is now experienced. This is his coming-of-age story out in the Wild West, or, I'm sorry, Wild Space. Either that's going to happen, or the tenderfoot's going to die in a heroic way. I was thinking, if this is just a Western that happens to be set in outer space, then that, one of those two things will happen. And one of those two things happened. And since there are many more Captain Future novels, you can guess which one happens. And it's <laughs> it's so predictable. I mean, in a classic old cheesy Western, that tenderfoot would die. And one of the last things that the seasoned old ranger did would be to carve, he was a Texas ranger on the headstone or something like that. Give him posthumous honors because he became a dude in the end. <laughs> At the end of this book... The Tenderfoot, Captain Future's looking down pensively at his extraterrestrial grave, and it's his name, and underneath, Future Man. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's all but the words. Everything but the words is a Western novel. Uh, so I, uh, for my final shot at a Garb August, I got a bank shot here. I, I, I hip-checked two book two events. Uh, because I read Garbage, this is... This is not good. The characters are one-dimensional. They telegraph what they're going to do. Their motivations are just because the author says so. 
uh, like I mentioned, the science in science fiction is a big deal in science fiction. It's good science fiction works hard to make that a believable part of the story. There's not almost no effort made to make that a part. It, it, this is, it just does what the author wants it to do. Uh, and it's thrill driven. It's plot driven. It's, it's one draft. So it meets all the qualifications of garbage, but it also is a Western. <laughs> and so it meets those qualifications as well, even though I thought I'd left June on the range behind. I, it definitely left me wanting to read more Captain Future novels. I think there are a few that, I, that are out there that I could probably find. Uh, but Danger Planet is how I'm going to wrap up Garbagus by going to the garbage that has the deepest personal history with me. Uh, which is science fiction garbage. <laughs> so, so that is the end of Garb August. I'll make some sort of fond farewell video tomorrow, uh, but I'll wrap this up for now, uh, and I will see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.